Warning, this podcast contains minor spoilers for a bunch of projects from the MCU, including lots of stuff from Phase 4, and lots of theories for Phases 5, 6, and beyond. They also created a Namor who is very attractive, and in that way, I think that casting Reed has to be important because you have to make it believable because otherwise Sue would just leave. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just be like... <laughs> There's no, that means no question. Let's talk about Marvel things, shall yeah. we? Yeah, I'd love to talk about those Marvel things. <laughs> Is there anything on the top, just top of mind? It seems like you can't really mm. log on to the various uh, internets owned by various billionaires without seeing some sort of conversation about comic book stuff, uh, the MCU in general. Is it dying? Is it growing? Oh, yeah. Is mm. it good? Is it bad? Mm. Um, are they finished? Are they just started? <laughs> is it just the beginning? Is it, is where it are the, the end? end? What's um, happening? Yeah, and your thoughts on phase four as we kind of round to a close. Yeah, okay. So I think I've been hearing since maybe mid phase two, this won't last. People are getting tired of superheroes. <laughs> Who's going to want this later? Uh, I was born in 1989. Uh, the year of Batman, hello. Um, and I haven't stopped loving him since, so I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I do think phase four is a transitional period, yeah, and yeah. therefore, for a lot of the fandom, was a challenge. What I think will carry us forward is the fact that you know, the people at Disney were so innovative in how they wanted to present stories to us that it gives us a lot of inspiration for the future. So in phase four, we get Disney Plus and we start getting all these great TV shows. I love WandaVision. I still think it's the bar for me. Um, but I also loved Loki and I loved um, Ms. Marvel, I thought was really great. And so we got a lot of like really good things in there. But the game changer is the holiday specials. Yeah, the special <laughs> Which have absolutely changed how we can introduce characters to the MCU without being, you know, too bogged down in story, right? What, like, love Werewolf by Night for it was like, yeah. here's it was the lore. So good. It should not have it been was that good. The best. I've seen it like four times. I'll probably watch it again before the end of the year. It's just fun. You immediately feel like you know the characters and you just like love the space and you kind of can't wait to see them pop up like in someone else's like please please make an appearance in blade like i just oh. need to get more of this universe expanded but it was just enough it wasn't too much whereas i felt like moon knight which i liked the majority of it was like it's, it's long and there's so much happening and like where are we going with I feel this like a moon knight special presentation could have been really it would really have been effective. amazing it would have been amazing and yeah. like just line it up with like an egyptian holiday that sort of aligns mm -hmm. with this thing and then like tell it because the other thing is like it's global so we have a lot of space i'm waiting on a valentine's day special uh well, if okay, anyone okay, writes okay. for marvel way, who's your dream valentine's day special if you could write it so my dream valentine's day special so hector hector navarro who some of you may know the great we talked about this on our pod the other day and we came up with two pitches so one is um, Valkyrie trying to, to date it. as Ooh. king. Yeah, Valkyrie right? needs the queen. Like, who doesn't want to see Tessa Thompson in a rom-com? She could totally yeah. carry it. Ooh. She's super funny. Please let her date women, Marvel. It would be really dope to see her, like, trying to balance being king, which we've seen her sort of struggle with uh, in the past movie. And then also, like, how do I navigate the Earth dating scene? Or does she even date Earthlings? Is she staying, like, in her kingdom? Like, I'm really curious to see what that would look like. The other one is we know we're getting close to a Young Avengers storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, would love to see Wiccan and Hulking, you know, in a, in a nice rom-com. Maybe there's a Valentine's Day dance. Maybe I get Storm as a chaperone. And she's, you <laughs> know, making like sure the children are staying ruler length apart when they're dancing like I just I think that would be really I love like a high school dance rom-com sort of situation I think really MCU cute. prom would be like a really good way to get those teenagers together because then saying. if Marvel is like in a you know love triangle and she's not sure which boy to go with and did she pick the right one to go to the dance with if you've seen Wednesday please just pick up that storyline I don't care <laughs> <laughs> really? I love it any love triangle the, uh, truly I love mess um so well, yeah that's what I would love to see and I, I think to answer your original question Marvel has really laid the foundation to say, uh, if we go out, it won't be without a bang and having tried really hard to keep your attention, which mm. I can appreciate. I don't think these movies, series are going anywhere. Um, people keep paying for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> also as well, something I think that gets lost in the conversation is like, 
Marvel, DC, you're getting up to like a hundred years of publishing for each of them. So there's oh, yeah. always an interest for these stories. It just used to be in comic book format. And now we're in a space where they're way more accessible on TV or as blockbuster film. So the appetite is going to be there, but it's going to ebb and flow like everything. We yeah. had Spider-Man. We had the X-Men. Those were the biggest movies in the world that ebbed and flowed. Then you started to get your Fantastic Fours. Then, you know, the MCU changes everything. Now we're getting Morbius. It, it happens. There's going to be quite... <laughs> ah, <boo. laughs> don't, don't bring your Morb cord in here. <laughs> <laughs> more, of course. But um, yeah, like I think that it's it's always going to be cyclical. And the thing that we always say on the pod is like, you can there's there's one there's so many things within the superhero universe. Everyone can find something they like if they want to. Werewolf by Night is a great example. So but also, if you don't like it, that's also fine. Yeah, that's there's also like fine. so many other great movies. We did a best of 2022 horror panel uh, talk on the podcast. You know, me and Joel love all kinds of movies. Like same with Jason. There's all different things. But this is just one of those things we're passionate about and. I think because of that, we can kind of see the audience and the hunger for these stories. And like you said, different stories. We are actually only just tapping into all the different characters, the Young Avengers, having queer characters, having more diverse characters, having characters from all over the world. That is actually just starting like 15 years yeah. into the MCU. So I think there's always going to be space for those stories to, to keep being told. Uh, Joelle, you said something that... Uh, that uh, really resonated with, with me, which is the love of mess. I also love Ooh, mess. Yeah. I love mess so much. And I really feel like, <laughs> I really feel like we're heading into the mess era. Oh, Ooh, the MCU yes. is messy. Because, yes. you know, like, WandaVision loved it. Mm -hmm. I also think it was, for me, the bar emotionally and in terms of storytelling and how it impacted the wider universe, kind of like... The, the gold standard for what a Disney Plus show can do. For sure. Mm -hmm. And it grows out of this, uh, you know, legendary, iconic relationship of the Vision and, and the Scarlet Witch. We're now entering a phase of the MCU where you have a lot of characters that are there or are coming that have relationships, that have relationships with other characters. Uh, front row here, we have uh, <laughs> a, a young man dressed as Namor. When, when, all I know is when Sue Storm shows up in the MCU. Yes! With it's the name mess. that we have. Not happening, lady. Folks, it's over for Reed, Reed Richards. Reed Richards is done. I mean, it's, it, not more is it, not gonna be it, it's going to be a big Let problem. It be no, 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 who you believe that Namor would fall for. That's the question. And also, then you have to cast a Reed, who is hot enough that it can be a love triangle. Which we're already so really sort of there, there because, because we have a King the Conqueror who is black, so yeah. we're, we're getting there, we're getting we're there. Get, I, I think the mess, WandaVision is a great point, actually, yeah, because that is a messy relationship. Messy. In the comics, you know, we're about to have Wonder Man, played by Yaya, yeah, yes. yeah, you know, and that is unbelievable casting. Wonder Man and Scarlet Witch, that is a relationship that happened in the comics. It's, and kind, of, it. it's kind of her husband. It's kind of her husband, but you know, not her like... husband. And I think we're going to get some really interesting interpretations of how Vision and Wonder Man, Simon Williams, connect in the MCU. So I think this is going to be the mess era of the MCU. And in, in that way, Phase 4 was actually quite a good introduction because it I was agree, just a yes. lot of outrageous storylines that can get brought in and brought out. And some of them were quite messy. And and once we get to the X Men, that's well. just mess city. <laughs> this is actually this is just the the mess cinematic universe. The next ten years is just preparing people Absolute for the mess, mess of the X Men cinematic universe. <laughs> Love that. Uh, you said something really, <laughs> I think, really important, which is, man, that Reed casting is going to be crucial. Yeah, oh it's yes, be crucial. You it. it we everybody everybody here has probably seen Wakanda Forever, and if you haven't seen Wakanda Forever, you've seen pictures of Tenoch as Namor. Look. An unbelievable perf performance just holds your attention every time incredible. he's on the screen. It's incredible. Our best villain since Loki, let's yeah, be real. Just, he, he's, they, they managed to do a great job of introducing a character who feels like they can become the heart of that kind of anti-villainous role that, that is so key to the MCU. And they also created a Namor who is very attractive. And in that way, I think that Casting Reed has to be important because you have to make it believable because otherwise Sue would just leave. Yes. <laughs> 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 There's no, I mean, 
there's no question. Oh, <laughs> split custody and, Shuri, uh, you know, Reed, it's been nice. But, uh, Shuri is literally the strongest person in the MCU that she didn't just join Namor and be like, you're right, let's just burn it all. Like, yes. I there was a moment of flirtation, and I was like, is it happening? The chemistry, <laughs> Tenet just on? has chemistry with everyone, Listen. so... Is mm-hmm. who who is your who's your dream Reed Richards casting? I was just thinking, okay, this is a challenge, right? Because you don't want to me. I sort of miss the MCU days when they were like, you virtually don't know this person. Yeah, yeah, like you've yeah. maybe character. seen them, yeah, here or there. And I think that would be really crucial to read, especially after we got Office dude in the <laughs> MCU, who I really like. I loved that casting. I thought it was really fun. I thought he did a great job in the role. I was glad he died though. That's not the Reed Richards. Oh, okay. I want in the MCU. <laughs> Damn, Rosie. Damn. Uh, but yeah, so I think that there's, that would be my my hope, would be that we would get a character actor. And I'm like scratching my brain trying to figure out like who could fill this role. Okay, what do you think of the, one of the biggest fan theory ones, that I do think this would be a good love triangle because I think it would put Sue in a, in a compromising position. What <laughs> about Raul Cooley? Because <gasps> that's one of the biggest fan theory Reed Richards. Oh, classics. he could kill it. Yeah, he could. He could really he's good. got that mix of like arrogance and like yeah. funny and, yeah. and and rude. Yeah. I'm interested to see it. I mean, the weirdest thing is that I think a lot of what we're seeing now in the MCU was meant to be setting up a Fantastic Four movie that was going to come out much sooner. Yeah. So it's very interesting now to be in a space where we don't know who the Fantastic Four are. But speaking of mess and WandaVision, it is Matt Shackman who's in charge. So they probably realized they were like, we need someone who can bring like a divorced couple energy mm-hmm. to yeah. this movie. Like we William need Jackson stuff. Harper. Oh! That's oh. my selection. Well, you know what? William Jackson Harper was just cast oh. in Quantumania. Oh, that's and right. And I believe mm. that... Uh, that was my first thought because you have Kang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He is a descendant of uh, Nathaniel Richards, you know, Reed's dad. A lot of people think he's going to be Reed. I think it's more likely that he is going to be Nathaniel Reed's dad. Because I, as my, I want an older Fantastic Four, but I think they're going to go young. I think it's going to be in their 20s. Because they're, they're going to want them to, to hold that for the next. We do have like a really like sly line. Oh gosh, and now I, of course I can't remember which movie. But doesn't Tony at one point like make reference to the Fantastic Four and say like, oh, like those guys from the 60s? There's there's a joke about, the, there's lots of jokes about naming conventions in the mm. MCU and a lot of them are like, oh, that sounds like a 60s boy band. Oh, that sounds, and I think the general rumor now is what many fans wanted, which was for a long time, I've been talking about it, I think we've talked about it on the podcast, the idea of a fantastic movie that, Four movie that begins in the 60s and moves into the the now and that seems to be the general idea of what they're doing like so there will be a lot of ways to tie that to a star marvel does period pieces really well and i am a sucker for like you know let's get into a specific era and really explore it i really liked um first class x-men first class i thought was really solid um and so yeah i could see more of that I, it's lovely. very interesting to see how they're going to bring that Fox universe into the MCU. That I think well, is that I think is the biggest question of how do you meld the world of like the original X Men movies, the, then the second era X Men movies that began with First Class. How do you bring that into the MCU in a way that feels holistic? And as Kevin Feige is a hater of reboots, that doesn't necessarily directly reboot it and just instead creates a, a kind of whole world. I have a theory, and it's not, it's not good, <laughs> and it's very obvious, but I've been reading, and as we've been discussing, I've been reading uh, Axe Avengers yes. versus X-Men versus Eternals, uh, the big crossover event of the last few months in the Marvel Comics that pits the Eternals. Again, the bottom line is Druig, who is a pretty ominous guy in, in, the, in the MCU version of yeah. the Eternals, uh, is like, you know what? Mutants are deviants. Our whole mission is we've got to take out the deviants, therefore we're going to wage war on the X-Men, uh, and a lot of things happen. Reading through it, it ties up a lot of loose ends that currently exist in the, in the MCU. Yeah. What's going to happen with the celestial in the middle of the ocean? How do we get a... <laughs> the how big do we get question. A, the big, which is a huge question. How do we get an, uh, an Avengers team back together? Um, what is the relationship between mutants and deviants? Mm-hmm. Turns out they share a lot of the same DNA. I think that, Rosie, no one is better positioned to talk about <laughs> the Eternals than you. I think the, I think the Eternals is our way in. No, I agree. And also, this is one of my number one favorite things. If you've ever listened to the podcast or you've ever had the fortune slash misfortune to meet me and talk about comics, <laughs> the Marvel comics, 
has always since the since the inception of the MCU, but way before that, including, you know, She-Hulk was created because they were going to potentially Im introduce She-Hulk on the TV show and stuff. So they've always seeded stuff, and this comic feels to me like they're seeding it. I mean, it's very simple if you think about it. We've all been wondering, where are the X-Men? How can mutants exist, but nobody knows about them? Are mutants going to be a new thing? No, if the Eternals, who have been around for, you know, 6,000 years, like, being sultry all over the world as we saw them in the movie. Um, <laughs> you know, like, just being hot, uh, being sultry, the world. just being sultry. Yes, through all the ages <laughs> of history. Ignoring some very big problems in yeah. the human world, but just going about their business, you know. If they've been around for that long, then that means that the mutants, if the Eternals believe them to be deviants, would have to be in hiding. And that is a really great excuse for the MCU to say, oh, well, Charles, you know, or Gene, or who, whichever Omega-level psychic uh, stopped everyone from being able to remember the X-Men, remember that mutants exist, you know? And I think that Kamala could be a huge turning point where someone who was originally, you know, in the comics an inhuman, but was originally supposed to be a mutant who is now a mutant in the MCU, that could be the person, oh, wait, mutants exist and then the Eternals come and there's a big problem and we kind of end up in a situation where we need Charles or Storm. I'm a Storm as a head teacher fan and I think yes. Storm is the way into the X-Men that we need. Yes. But I think that that definitely is the way we could be going, especially because the way we have the sagas going now, it, phase, phase, phase seven, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but it's probably gonna be the mutant saga. That seems imagine. like it makes the most sense. It should be. It really should be. Because, like, okay, do you guys want to hear my pitch about how yes. MCU needs yes. to be? Yes, the answer yes, is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I really like when the MCU plays, like, a long game in the background, right? That, to me, is, like, when you're like, oh. For ex if we could just go back to phase one where they're like, and here's the shield, and here's a hammer, and here's, like, Nick Fury, and you're like, oh, we're, we're getting there. We're gearing up. Uh, at the end of the Marvels, you know, after Kamala has caused whatever kind of chaos she's about to cause, would love it if a uh, Professor X uh, in my head is Jeffrey Wright. I think he's oh, perfect casting. Oh, I love that casting. Yeah, That's just great. rolls up at the cutscene and is like, "Hey, girl, <laughs> <laughs> you can't be in regular people high school." Yeah, 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 to go. That's okay. school. Uh, it's in New York. Admissions yeah. taken care of. We got you. We'll bust you back and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. from Jersey to New York every day. Don't even sweat <laughs> we play it. A lot of baseball. <laughs> There's like baseball. a lot of fun stuff to do. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and then from there, like as we're getting more of these kids, you know, most of the kids we have now are not super powered beings, right? I think love is and that's it. Love, we have we have one division we have a uh, Wonders the, the kids, children, children. but we're yeah. not really sure what their status is that yeah. we can imagine. But I think we're gonna appear. get more of them going forward and I would love it if as they're coming forward, like here's your like you know, Hogwarts acceptance letter, but it's yeah. like yeah. from the School for the Mutants. And I just think it would be really cool if I just, what I'm really asking for is a teen teenage show with the, the kids at the that school. Is the, uh, this How is, do we not have a boarding school show Disney of the Marvel Plus, movies yet? Disney Plus show just called School for Gifted Youngsters. Is The money is there. Or you, yeah. just call it, it, you just call it mutants and you just have everyone is about a different kid. I think that you're onto something because I actually think they're already doing that. We have Kamala, yeah. as we talked about on the podcast, Every episode of She-Hulk, that show introduced mutants all mm -hmm. the time. They might not have been like, this is a mutant. Yeah. But if you read the comics, they're mutants. They're characters who are mutants. I think they're already adding those little bits and bobs in so that when you get to, you know, Marvels, which is looks like it's going to be a really outrageous cosmic thing where Kamala and, and Carol are kind of doing this Rick Jones, Marvel, yeah. like switching. I think something that cosmic could probably get the attention of Charles Xavier, even if he's in hiding, and probably be like, yeah, you, you got to come. This also, Kamala's powers in now are these kind of cosmic, uh, you know, transformational quantum powers. That is an Omega-level power, probably, if you think about it. And then Charles is going to have to draw her in. So I, I love that. And I think it's really hard because we all love the X-Men so much. As you know, me and Jason will always find a reason to talk about the X-Men. <laughs> Same with Joelle. It's hard to not just want to skip ahead to that, even though we know it's probably not coming. But you know Kang and yes. Jonathan Majors. That's keeping me. I'm, I'm invested for the next era, just mostly because of that. Yeah, I would imagine by the time we get to the big crossovers with the whatever the next version of the Avengers team is that unites to fight Kang, I, I would imagine by then, especially with 
you know, we're going to get the high evolutionary and Guardians of yeah. the Galaxy mm -hmm. 3. Mm -hmm. We've already got Namor, who is, you know, mutant he number is one. The, the fast mutant. Um, it, it feels like you have enough, you have enough there under category M to already have either some teams or some, you know, secret teams mm -hmm. already operating by the time we get to the big crossover. You don't have to start at the beginning, which yeah. is what we've learned from how they drop Spider-Man into the, yeah. you know, crossover. It's like, we know these folks. Like, if you really need a refresher of, like, how did the school, you've got two great arcs. Okay, you have, like, one and a half, like, pretty good combination Movie of movies house. you can watch and get an <laughs> And idea. I'm sure they're all going to be on Disney Plus if they're not already, you know? It's not going to be hard for people to yeah. access them. Yeah, and so then, like, just leaving the door open to be like, oh, hey, the school's been operating quietly for a while uh, because, you know, we didn't want police to come here and, like, take over our school. And then sort of allowing those, like, you'll have, like, older teens who are, like, fight-ready. You'll have all of your teachers around. And then you can bring in the really young kids. Yeah, 12, like the 10-year-old child yeah. soldiers that Charles Xavier keeps around as you know, backup. <laughs> to help hone their skills. Right. That's what he's really trying to do. Yeah. His own son that he kept locked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case. Just what in a case. good guy, that guy. You know, so, okay, so the thing is that... Great our, guy. He's a wonderful yeah. man. We love don't, him even, here. don't even get me Come started. Don't even get me started. This man's training. He's, take, he's going to somebody's house and he's like... Your child's a mutant. This is very dangerous for them to live in the human world. Let them come to my school where I have something called the War Room where I train them how to go out and kill other mutants. He saw Star Wars right. and was really inspired. He's like, this is the way. This yeah. is how yeah. we do it. Jedi's, they seem like they treat children great. Gene, you know that now we, we don't go into people's minds without their consent. You're not doing that, right, Charles? No! I follow your lead. And he's like, no, don't worry. Don't, worry. don't, don't look at those mental blocks I put into your brain. Um, so... The one thing that we have coming up, we have Kang, obviously, yeah. love Kang, got the whole of Phase 5, and then we're leading into Secret Wars. So what do you two think <laughs> about the likelihood? Me and Jason have talked a lot about Secret Wars. They're introducing all these secret locations. We know, yeah. we, we've met them, Taolo, now Talacan. Oh, those two kind of sound kind of similar, yeah. actually. <laughs> um, you know, we've got the Veil vale in Miss Marvel. We have the Eternals, as generally as a secret society. We have all these different spaces where people are going to fight. What, and they can basically do what in the comics was called Battle World, where it was all different yeah. universes brought together, but it will just, well, they already exist in the MCU. How likely do you think it is that the mutants could come into play there in Secret Wars? As the introduction? I, I would imagine that it's all in flux right now. You know, they've left themselves numerous avenues, like they've already sprinkled in several mutants, as we've discussed. Um, how do you get to an entire secret society with mm -hmm. an up and running school mm -hmm. and a whole political ideology that exists uh, as a kind of uniting factor across this uh, across this community? Um, I don't know that they know, but yeah. my question with with Secret Wars is twofold. One, is it purely the time runs out kind of mm. uh, the, you know the result of a time runs out kind of storyline where you have the collapse of all the multiverses that have been introduced uh, over the last phase? Or is it really something like the original Secret Wars, where you just mentioned it, where we have all these secret societies and it's a fight somewhere in Battle World, like a tournament yeah. kind of style thing? Uh, or is it a combination of the two? That is the, that's, the, that's the question I have. And I would not be surprised if they don't really know which way they're going to they, go yet. You know, Feige was talking about how they were having the meeting recently, the 10-year planning meeting and oh, everything. Yeah. So I think that's where that's... I think Secret Wars makes sense because I believe that that was also the first event that had, like, the Avengers and the X-Men and everyone together. And Marvel likes to throw back to that kind of stuff. Sure. So I think that could be a cool thing. But it's like you said, how would it be done? I think you might have to do going to that kind of Days of Future Past style era... I think you might have to do something where if you introduce a version of the X-Men, it's like two X-Men who survived a mutant genocide mm. in a different multiverse, and then they come here. Because like you said, otherwise, we talk about this all the time every week. We're like, how do they introduce a world where mutants are hated and feared to the point where the X-Men story becomes relevant? Because that is yeah. not something that Because that's exists. the thing you need, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's powered people that exist now. They're and running they, around all over the place. And they have they started action little figures little and musicals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, they're, yeah. and people love them and, 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 and are, uh, you know, admire them deeply and are inspired by them. But how, so how do you make it so? And I think they've, they've, been, so. they've, been, mm -hmm. making, yeah, they've been making inroads towards this. How yeah. do you make it so people are like, you know what? 
now we don't trust them, especially if they're born that way. The reduction of the Sokovia Accords, I think, could come yes. to play a huge part in that because here's this idea of, okay, you saved us and we were all super grateful for that. That was awesome. You huge brought drop, by the way. Wow. That was just kind of like thrown oh, yeah. in there. And like I, I believe that on our interview, Cody was like, that was something where Jessica was just like, hey, how about it's like redact the Sokovia Accords? And they were like, like wow. sure. Ugh. They were like, yeah, no good. problem. Like, that's a huge, huge implication yeah. because, you know, it ultimately frees every superpowered being or person who wants to put on a suit to go out and do whatever they want to. And essentially you've sort of legalized vigilanteism. In well, a I also sense. think it frees up the space to do a real mutant registration storyline because the, the version part. we saw in Civil War is very like Tony based, very grounded in the MCU, very still messed up the idea of having to register people because of powers or anything. But I think that you're right. It, it, it opens up the floodgates, not just in the world of the MCU, but also narratively. Wakanda mm -hmm. Forever um, as well. It's quite clear that the Contessa is putting together, as we've said on yes. the pod, the superhero team that just follows orders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is that won't go rogue, that won't go, ah, I don't know about this because a lot of people are going to die. We're not going to do that. They want the team that will just go in there and do whatever she orders them to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is gonna be a step towards this kind of, whether it's mutant registration or a conflict between the official government heroes and the more off the books heroes like mutants if they if they introduce them. I think it's, it's set up pretty well coming off of Wakanda. Yeah, I think you're right, because also I think it's a really interesting two-way street between the notion of the militarization of superheroes, which is kind of ironic because the MCU superheroes are really militarized already, but but a more obvious like right. official militarization, and then the arrival of Namor, um, and that is that's going to spread the uh, man with winged feet Hold flooded a uh, sovereign nation state, and that is going to make people freak out and start thinking, oh, is the, is he a mutant? What's a mutant? The way the Earthlings have to be like, <laughs> yeah. we have got to explore these oceans. What is <laughs> happening down there? <laughs> what is like, going on down there? We've got giant there. things rising from the ground and in secret societies and God knows what else. Like It's, it, it's interesting in the um, Guardians of the Galaxy special, I was watching with my brother, and when the ship came in, you know, a lot of people were sort of critiquing the fear humans had when they saw the spaceship, and they were like, at this point, they've seen so many aliens. Why are they afraid? I'm like, the last time yeah. they saw an alien the ship come down, invasion? It wasn't it, good. <laughs> it was terrible, okay? <laughs> it was not good at all. Um, and so I, I really like the idea of not only is there an alien world above them, but also below them, and that sort of stoking mm -hmm. the fear of, like, we need to get some control over this. And it'll also be interesting, you know, once the um, Secret Wars plays out, like how secret does that stay at the end of the show? Yeah, what is the outcome of Secret Wars? Is Secret Wars gonna make everything one universe again? Is it gonna be a situation where we have multiple different kind of universes? That's probably very uh, intrinsically connected to whatever DC decides to do, I think. Yeah. Because I think oh. like that, I think, the com <laughs> I think the competitive nature of them will be like, well, does it make sense for us to just have one universe? Or wait a minute, after Secret Wars, we have an animated universe, we have a TV universe, we have a movie universe, but they're all kind that. of connected. So <laughs> yeah, I, think that, I think that it will be interesting to see. And obviously we have another secret coming first, which is Secret Invasion, where we're gonna get into the scrolls. So I mean, there's all kind of secrets going on. You mentioned the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, so we should mm -hmm. ask uh, the implications of Mantis and and Peter being revealed as siblings. Yes. Yeah. I that it. was like a. Dude. I was like, wait, what? Why have it you never talked so about this? Fast. You're reading, just gonna talk about this now? I'm what? reading like every single <laughs> comic book, and I'm like, this isn't. This <laughs> never existed. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I I do love that how the TV stuff. It seems like there's a lot more freedom to to introduce canon ideas yeah. mm -hmm. that maybe are a little bit more out there than the movies. Uh, the implications of that, I think, are huge because it means we already knew Mantis was very powerful, but she's now immensely powerful, one of mm. the only children of Ego who survived his genocide of his own children. Yeah, very, very tough. <laughs> and obviously, I think, like, um, James Gunn has always talked about how Mantis is one of his favorite characters, and I didn't really feel that until this special. She really got to come. Like, and, Palm killed yeah, it. And, and I, I think that we will get to see the centering. We saw this um, the, in the new trailer, right? The Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer. Rocket is a really, another fan favorite character of James Gunn's. And so I think that, that we're gonna see 
Mantis and Rocket becoming more to the fore than Peter Quill. I think that this puts Mantis on equal footing with Peter and will kind of squish Star-Lord away, especially now that we've had the best version of Star-Lord, which was T'Challa Star-Lord. T'Challa Star-Lord No one else, no oh one wants God. to see how the Star-Lord so I need cool. to see how many movies uh, Chris Pratt has left on his contract, but I think that you're right. Right? Yeah, I, it, it, the, well, Guardians of the Galaxy is allegedly the close of this right. era of the team, and like every team, there's many different iterations, so... 